Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast, where I'm on a mission to help you get the zettel casting of your dreams on your work table beside you. And today is a really fascinating video because this one was inspired by Vanessa and Nathan, who made two different posts in two different conversation threads that were going on in lilypub.org shameless plug lilypub.org and one thread was talking about the Zettelkasten and another thread was talking about reading fiction but both ended up talking about the issue of gathering information for for your Zettelkasten from fiction writing and so that was reading fiction for input into the Zettelkasten. And what it brought up was the question of feelings. Because in both Nathan's post and in Vanessa's post, the key thing was that what they were reading and wanting to extract out of the fiction books that they were reading was feelings. And so the reaction to the feeling was a thought. And I that struck me as so fascinating. I tend to be so thought oriented and that's why you people contributing and adding to the conversation, especially over in Lillipub, opened my eyes to new ways of seeing the world. But yet I've been aware for some time that the Zettelkasten brings both parts of our brains together and it gives a place for our thoughts and our feelings to come together around some inspiration and in such a way that we can see both our thoughts thinking and our feelings feeling and it's just a marvelous marvelous experience when that takes place so from the paucity of feelings that I have to give I have managed to pull some cards to share with you something of that experience uh, because I think it is a very important part of why a, a functioning, living, dynamic Zettelkasten on your work table can be such a boon for your entire life even if you do not actually use your Zettelkasten in the production of anything, if it just will enrich your life so much. I want us to come on over to the down facing camera and I'll walk through some cards with you and talk a little bit about how thoughts and feelings meet in a Zettelkasten. So come on over. Now this card is one that brings to mind the whole realm of feelings mixed with thoughts. This comes from a YouTube video called The Life of the Mind, which was a eulogy for Father Shaw. And the, it contains a quote from Father Shaw, that is that we know that words lead us to things, to realities far too glorious ever to be completely captured by words alone. This card brings about in me quite a number of feelings because the feelings that it, that it calls forth from me are an image of what those glorious things are. And so this is an example of a card that pulls feelings from me as I read it. And yet my response was, I think, very far afield from those feelings where I was just meditating, wondering, well, can speed reading also lead us to realities too glorious to be captured by words alone? I never did ma master speed reading, so I never came to the answer to that question. Um, but my tagline was, Words lead to glorious reality, speed reading too. But what I'm pointing out with this card is the way that thoughts and feelings can come together in a very strong manner. Now for both Vanessa and Nathan, what they first got from the author was the feelings that the fiction book created in them and then they reflected on how those feelings might come into play in the works of fiction that they were creating, how they might use or understand those feelings. Now, quite recently, I had a, a situation where a book brought feelings up in my mind. My first reaction to what I read in that book was feelings. And I made a reflection card on the feelings that it brought, me, brought up in me. But the strange thing is, I'm 
so tending to distrust my feelings that I did not even put them in what I got out of the book. But nevertheless, simply pulling this card brings those feelings back to me so that I can remember those feelings as well as the moment that I read it. So what I ended up with was capturing a thought about a, a pattern, a situation that took place, which is a, a, a way of watching the world go by from a space that's partially private and partially public, such as a, a window or a balcony that looks out onto the world. And then in my reaction, instead of talking about my feelings yet again in the reaction, what I ended up talking about was another uh, instance in my recent history where reading something brought up those same feelings. And that was a post that Nicholas made of a story uh, that he posted with an artist grandfather who is about to meet his grandchild and uh, with a balcony scene being described. And again, both the text and the reaction are thoughts only but they both recall the feelings that I had at the time of reading it. So I think I'm going to be more open as I go forward in creating these cards to being willing to go ahead and actually record my feelings onto the card and let it be possible that what I get out of the text is primarily feeling because it's really, really exciting to see the thoughts and the feelings come together. So I tracked down a few more such cards from my history with my Zettelkasten. One card I stumbled upon because it was physically quite close to the card that I was going for. And this one is talking about three kinds of wonder, wow, why, and awe. And when you think about it, these are definitely feelings. They're all three feelings. And um, interesting to compare and contrast the, the feelings of why, wow, and why, wow, and awe, and how they differ and how they're similar in our expressions of wonder. And that led me to another card, which comes from the Language Transfer Project. And this card has to do with language and how emotion and feelings show up in language. And the point was being made that the subjunctive is a change in feelings, not a change in meaning. And that brought me to an awareness that it probably explains why, although I did a little bit of studying of German a couple of years in high school and a year in college, and a much shorter time studying Russian, uh, both of those languages were far easier for me to get a foothold in than the Spanish language, which I've been studying for nine years now and not making a very good progress. And it dawned on me that I might now have the key to why Spanish has been so difficult for me. Spanish leads with feelings. And if you're not going to see the world the way the Spanish language expects you to see the world, you're going to have a hard time understanding the spoken language and expressing yourself in the way that Spanish speakers would be inclined to speak. And that led me to another card, also from the Language Transfer Project, which I recalled. But whilst languages overlap in the majority of what they do, we find that different languages require us to perceive, interpret, and express elements of reality in their own ways. And not just the elements like factoids, but our approach and our feelings to, to that reality. So that to me was very exciting insight, also related to feelings. And I came upon another card, which is a little too personal for me to share in detail. But the fascinating thing about this particular card, which my this work on feelings led me to, um, my yes directs me, not my feelings. The date of this card is exactly two years ago today. And a key word that shows up in this card is a sedia, which is a word that showed up in today's Zettelcast when, I, uh, when we were given the cute sharing opportunity to pull a card from our index that went in many different directions. And my card was life and Acidia showed up in a reference um, 
on that card today. So it, it was really, really meaningful to me to reread this card from exactly two years ago, which relates very, very much to what I'm doing right now in trying to teach the Zettelkasten. So I can't tell you how to feel feelings. Most of you probably do that much more naturally than I do. I am so thought brain oriented, so pegged in that particular direction. But the exciting thing is to have one or the other of your areas on your main card relate to feelings. Now I've given those people who are in my minimalist series a main card checklist for creating a main card. And it starts with thoughts or ideas from the book and then your thoughts or feelings or reactions to it. And now I know that this card could well be modified to say that you might start with the feelings and respond with your thoughts or start with your thoughts and respond with your feelings. Because that's what a Zettelkasten will do for you, is it will get both halves of your brain operating together. And you know what you get when both halves of your brain are operating together? It's called being in the flow. And it's just absolutely exhilarating, and it puts your work on wings. So I hope you will have fun letting your feelings be expressed on your main cards. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.